What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here, and today we're taking a look at the Dark Glass X Ultra distortion pedal. The X Ultra is a crossover distortion type of pedal. And that means that you get to keep clean, low frequencies and blend them together with distorted or overdriven mid-range and treble frequencies. And that yields a very aggressive tone that still retains a full low end. This is a technique that's been done for many, many years in the studio and is used by bass players such as Geddy Lee, Billy Sheehan, John and Twistle, among many others. There are a lot of features here on the pedal, so let's take a look at the controls. Here on the front, we have an on-off bypass switch, as well as a distortion on-off switch. That means that you can turn on just the EQ preamp section of the pedal, separately from the distortion engine. Then we have a six-band graphic EQ and a master volume control. We then have a low compressor knob and this controls the amount of compression applied to the low clean frequencies. This helps to retain a full powerful low end even at high distortion settings because the low end is clean and it keeps at a consistent level. If you hold the bypass switch for a couple of seconds, the LEDs turn from red to blue. And in blue mode, you compress the whole signal, you know, from the low end to the upper distorted frequencies. In the red mode, which is a standard mode, you're only compressing the low end. We then have a low level, which controls the amount of volume of the clean frequencies. Then we have a high level, which controls the amount of volume of the mid-range and treble frequencies. And then a high drive, which controls the amount of drive saturation distortion happening on the mid-range and treble frequencies. Then we have the low pass and high pass control. And the low pass tells the pedal how much clean low frequencies should remain undistorted. And it ranges from 50 Hz from a very subby bass tone to 500 Hz to retain some clean mid range. The high pass tells the pedal which frequencies should be distorted. So you can go from 100 Hz and above to get a more growly tone, more fuss like and then up to one kilohertz to get a very precise metallic sounding tone. And like I said, these two controls are very powerful and small changes in the frequencies there can have a very drastic impact on the sound of your bass. On top of the pedal, you have your quarter inch input, an auxiliary in to connect an MP3 player device, for example, your power supply socket, a headphone output to practice silently, and your quarter inch output to connect the pedal to the rest of your pedal board or your amp. On the right side of the pedal, you have your ground lift, as well as the USB socket to plug it into your computer to access the dark glass suite. On the right side, you have your XLR out, as well as the cap simulation on off switch. And thanks to the USB cable that comes with the pedal, you can access the dark glass suite where you can pick from a list of different cap simulations and you can also import your own. And that is a really quick way to completely change the sound of the pedal because different cabinets have a different flavor to the distortion, how the low end sounds like. So if you want a more aggressive tone, pick a different cabinet and you can change the sound very quickly. So now let's check out some sound samples. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Believe it or not, the tone that you heard at the beginning was recorded with my 130 euro bass. And I recorded that as a demo first, just to have some reference, and then I was planning to re-record the track. But once I had the guitars and the drums, the bass sounded so good in the mix that I just decided to leave it. And I didn't even have to tweak that much to get there. As you could hear, you can get some pretty aggressive and massive sounding tones using this pedal. And the cool thing is that you retain the fullness of the low end because of the crossover section. And because you're compressing that, you know, you keep some consistent pillow and support for the rest of the band, which is something that not all distortion pedals do because the more drive you boost or, you know, turn, you know, you lose some low end, but this doesn't happen with this pedal. Now, a lot of people asked me about, you know, moderate and milder types of distortion saturation using this that is also something that I was curious about and I found that you can do it it does you know it works for those kind of sounds but you have to tweak a bit more to get there for example by using the high drive at nine o'clock or below and compensating for the loss of volume by boosting some more high level as well as using the high pass at either 500 or below that gives you a more kind of like a grunty, growly type of distortion and not that piercing metallic sound that's kind of current at the moment in the metal and gent scene. So if you want more traditional type of tones, try to use lower drive settings, more high level and also setting the high pass at like below 500 Hz. But you have to experiment with that a little bit. Overall, I found with the other Douglas pedals that have a blend control, getting a more milder type of saturation is easier, but this one definitely beats most of them at, you know, really in your face type of distortion. This is really easy to get a slicing tone that just, you know, smacks you in the face. That's, it's really good for that. One thing that I think is kind of like a double edged sword is that compressor here. Because when you start compressing the low end, you can play a bit sloppier and still get away with pretty consistent dynamics, which is a tool, you know, you should use it as a tool. It helps you to deliver a better performance. But I think it, you know, it can hurt you if you depend too much on that compressor to deliver a solid performance. Because when I was testing the stuff, you know, it was easier to, you know, down pick, for example, for a long period of time and still re retain the, the same attack, the same consistency, thanks to the compressor. You know, that is definitely helpful, but you don't want to rely too much on this to correct your dynamics. So that's something to be aware of. One thing that I like that they seem to have improved is the DI output. On the B7K that I had and my current Alpha and Omega, the output of the DI out is really hot, so you couldn't do much on your interface to control how much volume was going in, even without boosting a lot of gain, you know, you were getting quite a bit of output out of the XLR out. And on this one, 
you have some headroom there, which is pretty cool. You know, I can boost or use my preamps on the interface to record instead of just boosting a little bit and worry that I might clip something. So that's something really cool that I appreciate. The other thing related to that is that you have the cap sims, which is always useful when you're running distortion because it tames some of that fizzy, you know, frequencies that just annoy you, like really up top, the unpleasant sounds, they roll them off just like a bass cabinet would do. And you can get some really cool tones with that. The other cool thing is that you get a bunch of free input responses there and you can also import your own. For example, for the intro, I used a Mesa Powerhouse input response. I wish there was a toggle switch to turn on and off the cap sim for the quarter inch output because the cap sim is only on the XLR out and that forces you to place the pedal at the end of the chain. And what if I want to use an RDI box to record or to send the front of house? I can't do that because the cap sim is only here. Having it on the quarter inch output will allow me to hook it up to different preamps or DI boxes or just to put the pedal at other places on the pedal board and still retain the cap simulation. Overall, I think if you're looking for a distortion pedal to play like aggressive hard rock to really in your face and down tune metal, this pedal is definitely something that you should check out or the X series overall. If you're looking for more milder types of distortion ranging from just a hair of breakup to more aggressive, you know, classic rock, hard rock tones, something like the vintage Microtubes by Douglas might be a better fit. You can get in that territory with this one, but you might need to experiment a bit more and tweak some more stuff and also experiment with different cabinets. If you liked the X Ultra by Douglas, there's gonna be a link in the description below to learn more about it. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite distortion pedal so far. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.